Hello everyone, so I've been getting quite a few comments recently asking me how I made the Persona 5 uh, ending thing, so I'm going to be doing that today. Um, once again, thank you for checking out my channel and these tutorials, and I'm doing something a little bit different today. I'm recording the commentary after I've recorded the video just to see if it makes me a little bit more coherent, but also because my computer really struggled to record this tutorial, so doing the voiceover at the same time would have been really bad because it would have just meant more strain on the computer and also would have meant like the audio crashing and having to be synced up and stuff like that. And that would have been a pain in the ass. So yeah, we'll get into the tutorial now. So obviously you go to After Effects, New Composition, call it whatever you want, and I'm using these settings on the screen. Uh, I think going with the higher frame rate for this is better because you want that smoothness. So the first thing I did was um, I brought in this background that I made with the stars. Now I'm not going to go into how to make the stars because I've already done a video on this recently. So if you go on my channel and look up that tutorial, you basically want to do that and then you want to make a background similar to this or at least uh, half the screen on the right hand side covered in the stars that are animated and however you figured out you that you wanted to do the animation and you want it to be about five or six seconds. Now the one I've got here on the screen is about three seconds so I just duplicated it and then I pre-composed it so we had less layers. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into Illustrator. Now what I did was I recorded um, a couple of seconds of the game and just pressed pause on the menu and so I got the footage. Then I took that footage, put it into Adobe Premiere, turned it into a GIF. Uh, not an animated GIF, like um, a regular GIF where it gives you individual frames. And I put every frame that I needed, which is only about 10 frames like this, into Illustrator. Now you can use Illustrator, Photoshop, Microsoft Paint, whatever graphic software that you have and you're comfortable with. And basically, just do like I'm showing you on the screen. Um, you want to put the references in if you want to use the references. If you're doing your own drawing, then that's fine. Uh, but I wanted it to be exactly like it is in the game. So basically, if you are following like this, then you want to draw around the um, the character, so Joker, and you want to have the split white bit at the same part. As you can see, I've changed the head and the face to look like myself, so I've changed the hair, I've added a bit of facial hair, glasses, um, I added the half-tone uh, dots where need be, so that's what you need to do. So you need to do that for every frame. So like I said, there's about nine or ten frames that you'll need because the last frame is the one that we're going to hold on for a few seconds. So I'm not going to show you how to draw that. If you really, really need a tutorial for that, there's probably better people out there that can show you how to use like an Illustrator or Photoshop. I can do one if there is um, people asking for it. But like I said, it's just tracing it really. So... Um, that's all you need to do. Alright, so now we're back in After Effects. So we're going to take those references that I was talking about and we're going to use them to help us animate this next part of the uh, the tutorial. Now the um, the main part of it, which is the, the middle character, which is yourself or whatever drawing you've done, if you've done it like I've shown you, that's essentially already animated because it's 10 or however many different frames so you don't actually need to do any animation with that but um, like I said this this will help with the the background and whatnot so take those layers and you want to shorten them down to um, literally one frame each and so you want to take it from the end cut that all the way down to one frame and then the next layer you want to move that along one frame the next layer after that move that along one frame so you get this um, descending or ascending effect doesn't matter which way because as, as long as your layers are in the right order it doesn't matter if it's descending or ascending if that makes sense so do like I'm doing on the screen here so shorten them down to one frame and 
uh, from both sides and the last frame you can hold on that for as long as you need to because like I said that last frame is the one that we're going to be holding on at the end for quite a while or however long you need your animation to be or your end screen to be. Once you've done that I've just scrubbing through it a few times just to make sure that I've definitely got it right. Like I said my computer was struggling to even play any of this stuff back. I realised after a while that I had it on full quality but even at uh, one quarter or one eighth or whatever the lowest is it was still struggling. So after that you're going to do the same thing with your drawings. You're going to put them in again the descending or ascending order doesn't matter just as long as you do the same thing with it where you you changing it to one frame each except for the final frame so the reference layer if you are using that I, I pre-compose that in one layer because you're not actually doing anything with it it's just there for the reference so it means you know nine or ten less layers that you could click on so I say do the same thing with the drawing layer take them all down to one frame and also if you need to um, fit them right click and scale them or fit them to the size of your composition once you're happy with that scrub through it play through it make sure that it runs smoothly and you've not got any layers that are in the wrong order and that's essentially it for that so you can turn those layers off for now and they're not going to get in the way of this next part so the next part what we're going to do is we're going to animate the background so what you want to do is draw around the red part of the the reference and you can put the color in if you want so here I'm just checking that I've drawn it right and that I've got the right color and so I'm going with a bright red here you can do gradient you can do whatever color you want and also as well you want to make the stroke about five and make that white because what that'll do is if you were going to do that on a separate layer it essentially means a lot more animating whereas if you've just got a white stroke on even though it's technically on all four sides because of the way that we've drawn it it's only actually going to be shown on that one side like it is in the actual game so turn the background fill off to help just see what we're doing so what we're going to do is go down to the path uh, put a keyframe at the start go along I think it's about three or four frames to where it starts to move the frame before it starts to move put a keyframe there so it's the same as the starting one so there's no actual movement there and then what you're going to do is go through each individual frame where there's movement and you're going to animate it so it's the same so there's actually only a couple of frames of animation here and it's not too difficult it's literally like the two points like the top and the bottom here um, because of the tutorial and I, I actually had a quick look um, at the actual thing you can see that the the path actually bends in and starts to skew a little bit of the middle so I don't know why I bothered to actually do this because I added the the extra point to the path but then I realized afterwards that the character is going to be completely blocking that so you're not actually going to see it I mean depending on how you've drawn your character and what position on the screen they're going to be this might be helpful for you but you don't actually need to do it because like I say you're going to be covering that part up anyway or if you you know depending on how you animate you might have the right hand side of the screen cover the left hand side a little bit because at least the right hand side of the screen has got some animation going on with the stars so that's a little bit more interesting but yeah I just did it anyway just for the sake of it so once you're done with that turn the fill colour back on and just play through it scrub through it just to see that you've uh, completely covered up the side of the screen that you want into and that the animation works properly so that's basically it for for most of it the rest of the stuff now is like the optional stuff that you don't have to do other than the text I suppose but the text you could even just add in the actual like YouTube cards and stuff like that if you wanted to but um, what we're going to do now is I'm going to animate a mask for both sides of the screen so what I did was I duplicated the layer again deleted all the keyframes for it because we don't actually need to do anything with the pattern on it so delete that and alpha mat the actual layer so that the layer above it becomes a mask layer and the position you're just going to drag it up to the top left I mean you can 
have it just come in from the left or anything like that but I liked it coming in from the top left so then I can make the right hand side come in from the bottom right so I say yeah put your position key uh, at the start and about two frames in so the one two frames in uh, is going to be your end point so have it be the same as it is now and then the first keyframe you want to move that up a little bit so it's off the screen and that way it's going to come down so like I say it's two frames of animation it's going to be very quick so I put the motion blur on just so with the motion blur on you can sort of see the animation a little bit more because it is very quick so for the right hand side draw around the part of the screen that is encoded up by the the red shape and we're going to do a similar sort of thing so you could also have this side just come in using positioning but because it's a little bit more interesting and there's a little bit more stuff going on I like to have it revealed with the the mask moving uh, which I'll show in a sec so um, with this like I said draw around the shape and then go down to the path and do the same sort of thing that we we did at this with the um, the moving part of the red thing so you're going to want to grab the the top handles on the mask drag them down at the bottom and then you want to go a few frames in similar to the the red side you want it to be at the same time so they kind of like intersect and lock in with each other and then just drag that up turn on the motion blur turn on your alpha mat and like I say you've, you've got a little bit more of an interesting um, reveal there and uh, like I said, they're both very quick animations, so you're probably barely even going to notice them when you actually do it. So that's why if you didn't want to do these masks and you just wanted to leave it just kind of the whole thing popping, you're not really missing out on a lot. But I like to do it like this just so it kind of like transitions from one thing to the next one. And so now that we've got the masks out of the way, we're going to do the text. So new text layer and I going with thanks for watching but obviously go with whatever you know you're needing this for um, I realized that I didn't actually have the the tool tab on because for some reason my Adobe likes to change the workspace so if you don't have that on make sure you turn that on now because that'll be quite handy um, move your text layers to the bottom but just above the background so it can be obscured by the the character because I think that looks a little bit more interesting um, obviously don't make it completely unreadable but just like the corners of the the words maybe or the shapes on the next bit as I said it just looks a little bit more interesting so I'm using this uh, Dr. Punk text which I, I think I used in something else recently I can't remember but uh, I'll put it in the description again so with that for the left hand side I like to go black with a white stroke and you can turn the stroke down quite a bit because it looks a little bit weird without it. So I have the text starting when the uh, the animation's almost complete. I don't want it fully completed because I'm going to show you at the end a little bit of animation to go with it and I think it just looks better when things are still moving and the text comes in at the same time. And we're going to do a, a similar masking thing with it so just draw a new shape layer alpha mat it and then have it come in uh, from one side to the other you could also probably um, use some of the the text presets in after effects that might look better depending on what you want I can't actually remember how I've got it on the uh, my actual one oh it's it's because in, in the actual one I, I did it like this because I've got the persona 5 battle wipe transition that I made so if you wanted to I've got that video on my channel you could download that and then you could do this if you add that wipe on top of it that wipe comes from the top right to the bottom left so it looks like the text is being um, revealed using that that wipe transition that looks pretty good I think so you could do something like that you could make your own transition or you could use the um, like the preset ones in After Effects so that's the left hand side done for the right hand side um, depending on what you write, I wrote the shows over because it's it's what's in the game and also it's fitting because it's like this is the end of the video. So that's um, that's three lines of text. So I put that all in one layer. You could put it in different layers if you wanted to, but for tutorial purposes, I just put it in one layer because it makes it easier. And because it's 
black and white text on a black and white background you want to add some shape layers to the background um, behind that so again because if it's a tutorial the shapes I'm putting are pretty basic but um, you know you make them as interesting as you want and I feel as well having some of the text be white and the shapes black and some of the text being black and the shapes white just looks a little bit more interesting um, so depending on how many layers you do for this if you do three layers of text and three layers of shape or whatever you put um, pre-compose them and that way you've got one layer to deal with if you end up doing a mask afterwards which I do here so again you could pre-compose them and do a mask or you could just have them uh, like I say use the preset text uh, animations in After Effects um, either way it's gonna look good and um, yeah that's that's it for the most part so the final stage which again you don't have to do but I think is um, it makes it look a lot better is this um, the sort of impact animation so all it is is um, just go to effects add a wiggle and turn it up quite high at the start but then animate it here so you can see it starts off as five and then quite quickly comes down to zero because you only want in that sort of that smack on the screen and then it like slowly um, disappear you don't want it to go like smack and then straight to zero because it looks a bit unnatural but um, yeah having having a couple of frames and it gets slower and slower um, unless it like impact and also um, you can add the scale into it which you don't have to do but it, um, it kind of adds to the effect and if you need to move the position a little bit you can do that you could move the position in quite erratically so that would help with the impact or you could just move it a little bit just to um, move it around basically if it's if it's covering something or not covering something um, and then also as well which I didn't show in this but once the animation is all finished I added a white line behind it so to do that you would just draw a white line from wherever you want it to start to wherever you want it to end um, go into add trim paths and just keyframe that um, start to end quite quickly and that will kind of like solidify that the animation is over then just have the animation play out as long as you need it to so mine's a couple of seconds yours could be you know a lot longer if you wanted it to you could use this as a background for an entire video or, or something like that but um yeah that's gonna do it for this tutorial so hopefully uh, you found this helpful if there was anything that you didn't understand or you wanted a bit more in depth of an explanation just leave a comment and I can um, either show you or I'll try and you know type your an explanation but yeah that's gonna do it for me so yeah again thanks for watching and um, I think this is probably the last one that I'll do because a lot of people have been asking me how to do the intro but let's say it's gonna take such a long time to explain it literally took me about eight hours to make and obviously that's kind of I know what I'm doing now with it but it's still gonna take a long time and and after doing this one it, it struggled my computer that is my computer struggled to record this so that intro has so many layers and pre comps and moving things and yeah I, I don't think uh, it'll work what I might do is, is see if I can um, get a like a preset file made and just say like just change the text here and and that'll work for you but we'll see but anyway thanks for watching and I'll, I'll stop rambling now because this is over 20 minutes so yeah, bye.